So here we are with a very long awaited and anticipated review, courtesy of Critical Care Northampton, of the new GE VSCAN SL portable ultrasound probe. So, did it meet up to the challenge? Is it worth buying? And what did we think? Here we go. So the review has been performed by three of us, my good friend Marcus Peck, Ashley Miller and myself. We're all consultant anaesthetists and intensive care consultants as well, working in various different venues throughout the UK. So if you look on the um, website, uh, you can see that uh, GE have priced it at 3950 Now this probe's got a sector phased array and a linear on the other end. So what they've done to change it from the curvilinear to the uh, linear that they had in the previous guys, which we loved. So um, scrolling through the website, and please do scan the QR code at the bottom to take you directly to the website, you can see uh, what the probe is all about, uh, according to GE. So you've got the wireless probe. Uh, it does have some added extras on it, which we will discuss shortly. Uh, including uh, the usual intuitive connectivity to your mobile device, your iPad, um, and we've only tested it on an Apple-based system. So yes, there's a new cardiac phased array probe on one end, and the nice linear probe on the other end. There's also the usual store and collaborate uh, software, and uh, if you click the vscan uh, data sheet which i'll put a qr code up for shortly you will be able to see what the probe is all about and its specs um, ge have also got uh, some cloud-based um, imaging storage and so forth and so on that i do believe you need to subscribe to uh, so that's well worth looking into as well so that you can uh, do remote uh, imaging you can have a, a mentor looking at your images remotely and so forth and so on and share it with colleagues here is that QR code. If you scan this, it will take you to the VSCAN Air SL datasheet. So, moving on. Here is the box that arrived, um, nice. courtesy of GE, and we're very grateful to them for delivering it to us to be the uh, test site. And unboxing. And here we go, straight into the box. And we're confronted with obviously uh, pretty much. Flash in the pan, uh, start, quick startup guys. So they've got a new charger and this scanner will actually remain on and it's in the charging dock itself, which is really handy. So it won't switch off and um, disconnect from the phone. So for example, you could be reviewing the images and, and so forth from it, and probably playing with the functionality of the probe itself. Back of that, uh, obviously lots of different uh, languages. And uh, if you scan the QR code, it's the usual help menus from GE, which is really handy. And then the next thing, beautifully boxed, we've got the actual case itself here. And I think the future for this will be a battery and built into this, which will hopefully give you some battery life back into the probe on the fly. And here is this beautiful device with its phase direct probe on the end, and the typically the large linear probe. Again, lovely to hold, great weight on it. Really looking forward to using this for some nerve blocks and for some echo and some lung ups, which we'll show you a bit later. And here's the charging dock that I mentioned before. Slightly different now, pretty specific to the Pro, but I do believe any wireless charger will work. So that's fabulous. Great, so here is the quick start card that arrives in the box, and you can see it really is a plug and play situation. So there's no complexity to it whatsoever and we found it extremely intuitive and easy to connect. The next thing is inside the box as we've already shown you there's the lovely carry case which doesn't have a battery inbuilt which I think in the future could do certainly help and that lovely wireless charging dock which um, allows the probe to still be operational when charging. Okay so we've hooked up to the USB-C uh, just on the edge of the wireless charging dock here. Simple case of placing the probe down on there, and you'll see that it gives us a status on the battery, and a presumably meaning kind of sort of quarter to half full. And I believe these LEDs are going to change colour according to uh, the level of charge within the device. So uh, we'll get scanning. 
and indeed they do they change from amber to green obviously red when it's got very low battery so signing on and getting started of course you need to have your login and password please remember those you can get those or well you can basically sign up via the app on your device once you get going with that you can start to talk with the probe and link up and the probe goes purple when it's within linking mode and you can see here this is the device uh, searching for the probe and it waits and connects so you turn the probe on it gives you the instructions on how to do it and you can see that it literally is a few seconds it starts to initialize the probe and then we'll connect it tells you exactly what you need to do and again really straightforward you don't actually need any instruction manuals uh, or anything of that guys to be honest with you and that's it done uh, the probe found and linked and uh, all ready to go and you can see here that the next screen the probe decides it needs an update so it will go uh, through the process and it will update itself and it starts to flash uh, purple uh, this didn't take long either and I guess it's just a sort of uh, software update so that your your firmware is uh, has got the latest uh, software on it and this only took uh, I think it was a few minutes basically so again all very straightforward and lovely and then we've got the usual system set up and we're ready to scan um, very intuitive you can see all the different settings there just working through a few here's cardiac um, on the screen there and that's the phased array connection and then we can activate color doppler and of course the lovely plus sign to the right and sort of superscript gives you the pulsed wave doppler you can see that down the bottom left so we move to abdominal and then we're going to move on see what the vascular is like and it goes to its linear end and then shifting on to TCD just for a little bit of a fiddle with that it's just to demonstrate really how quick it is to swap in between the modes uh, on the probe and how intuitive it, it all was for us uh, it does MSK and I think really they've got a good uh, good spread of different modalities so what did it look like so we've run through some images of, of the heart so I'll just talk you through these obviously this is with the new phased array end now these images here are taken from uh, an obese patient on intensive care unit and you can see that the long axis views here are really quite good despite um, the patient's body habitus uh, being being on the larger side so really impressive uh, clear and crisp images and here are some images of uh, an IVC uh, a normal on the left and then uh, some of Marcus's uh, patient who had uh, right heart failure you can see a lovely plethoric looking IVC good couple of centimeters plus and uh, some rouleau blood flow in the, in the venous circulation there as well really nice uh, here's one of Ashley's uh, I believe this was a game-changing scan down in the emergency department and you can see a lovely long axis view there unfortunately not much action going on in the LV there uh, very scanty mitral valve movement and below there there's also a, a decent pleural effusion uh, sort of uh, hugging that descending thoracic aorta another zoomed image of the long axis view there again uh, reasonable uh, LV failure situation here with an enlarged left atrium to see but really good crisp images and this one here is uh, again Ashley's, uh, the game changer that uh, he did in recess. You can see a four chamber view here with enlarged left and right atria. Sorry about the background noise. Um, and uh, you can see the, uh, crispy valve movements there, which is all very good. Um, and you can see a, there's definitely an enlarged right atrium. Uh, and uh, this, this obviously was a game changing scan because this patient was deemed not to be suitable for intensive care. And here's some other images just to demonstrate normal uh, partial four chamber views going into five chamber views uh, with some addition uh, of color flow as well which uh, which is really good and some of Marcus's images these are subcostals moving uh, into the subcostal short axis view which is really nice you've got on the left some color flow uh, showing uh, some regurgitant uh, tricuspid flow uh, over the top of that aortic valve same situation without color flow on um, but it's an RV failure situation uh, that's clear to see really good images and Marcus has also got an inflow view here uh, demonstrating significant tricuspid regurgitation jet 
really, really good images, a really good, uh, nice, clear uh, right heart failure to see here. Again, one of Ashley's uh, demonstration um, of significant right heart failure with biatrial dilatation and biventricular failure. Addition of colour, you can see some aortic regurge going on through um, the uh, five chamber view, which is a really good crisp five chamber view there. And here is uh, Marcus's um, RV failure patient with a significant uh, TR jet on pulse wave Doppler. Now the only thing we would have loved here, sorry on colour Doppler, would have been the ability to put uh, continuous wave Doppler through this jet to see what the TRV max was because I think it would be pretty significant, well over three metres a second signifying uh, a significant pulmonary hypertension. Again, here's a, a mitral valve demonstrating enlarged left atrium, probably due to this significant regurgitant jet with a nice um, Doppler signal coming through there. So some nice cardiac images there. What about lung? So on the lung side, using the phased array probe, which is eminently good for uh, lung ultrasound and uh, many other things, even abdominal and partial vexus, you can see the uh, right lung base here with a good lung curtain coming through and the left lung base with the same thing and then just with a bit more depth on going back uh, into the spine uh, showing the abdominal compartment there and uh, Morrison's pouch. Moving on to the upper anterior points some really good views of the linear probe showing the A-line profiling nice sliding pleura between the ribs really crisp and easy to see. On to abdominal as I said, phased array probe is a really nice one for abdominal scanning. Here are Marcus's uh, beginning vexus scans. On the left is a lovely view of the kidney, uh, the hepat one of the uh, hepatic portal veins and going into the porta hepatis on the right. Uh, and you can see the IVC at the bottom um, and some bowel coming into view in the middle as well. So what about uh, uh, vexus? So Vexus is venous um, excess ultrasound. We're looking uh, to uh, de-resuscitate our patients who may be fluid overloaded using Vexus scanning. So how did the probe fare with this uh, modality that's becoming more and more in favour on intensive care setting particularly? Well, Mark has got some absolutely beautiful um, venous and arterial Doppler signals on the periphery of this kidney here. You see a lovely arterial phase on the top and a venous partial pulsatile phase at the bottom there. So that's really nice, really clear. Same for the hepatic vein images showing the, the A, the S and the D waves there really, really clearly. Uh, and the portal, a nice pulsatile portal vein here uh, showing the fiery view of the porta hepatis at the bottom. And this is one of my patients with a, a failing, sadly, pelvic transplanted kidney with a, uh, you can see the difference in the uh, Doppler signal there, very um, a different systolic and diastolic waveforms with almost a, a uniphasic vein at the bottom. And here are the colour images uh, showing the uh, portal uh, system on the left, the venous system in the middle and the porta hepatis on the right, really uh, obviously clear vexus images that frankly you would um, be good to get on a, on a main large card system so really impressive obviously my love of regional anaesthesia I tested the probe out didn't perform any blocks but obviously scanned the patients prior to uh, having the uh, block put in so what did I see so some really nice images here on the left of the supraclavicular brachial plexus moving up into the interscalene groove there you can see. In the middle a bit more focused view of the interscalene groove showing C5, 6 and maybe C7 and on the right you've got the subclavian artery and the supraclavicular brachial plexus and the left at the base uh, of the right hand image there shows the first rib quite clearly. On the left here is the median nerve at the wrist really really clear Um, and you can see the median nerve again in the central image uh, just with a bit of uh, gain um, alteration and on the right I've moved the probe from short to long axis and there's the median nerve in long axis just there. This is just showing the radial nerve at the head of the radius around the elbow really nice image of the whiteness of that, uh, of that large nerve there.
So it's a great probe for performing regional anaesthesia as well. Nice to see what Amit Power thinks of it. Here's uh, vascular, the obvious go-to when you're on intensive care on anaesthesia and you're called out for difficult cannulations. Nice views of the vein on the left and the antecubital fossa. And then you can see uh, the artery uh, pulsing away there. And then moving into uh, the long axis view of one of the veins on the right, so really good. Here's just the addition of an, an off-axis um, pulse wave Doppler uh, showing the reverse signal. Um, and obviously you can uh, change the angle um, of insonation on the pulse wave Doppler there, but it's at the wrong angle, but it was just to demonstrate what we can see. So there's some really nice images uh, coming from the probe. Hi, my name's Marcus. Uh, I'm an intensive care and anaesthetic consultant in the Hampshire hospitals. And uh, I'm here to talk about uh, the fantastic V-Scan Air SL, the latest addition to the V-Scan Rocks team. Um, I was very privileged to be able to have this for a couple of weeks and just like the CL, you know, the power of having uh, a probe that you can literally put in your pocket, pull out when you need it and use it without a faff of wires is a really powerful tool and I've used lots of different kit, handheld, cart based and, and so on and, and I think you know you can't understate how, um, how the utility of a probe like this can, can actually impact on you uh, day to day. I, I worked in a busy intensive care unit with a big outreach service. I was able to pull it out with no delays uh, all over the hospital, um, you know, and, and I think, you know, even where carts exist, you know, they're often hard to find, take some time to boot up, etc., and they're cumbersome. So, you know, having a handheld device really, you know, for me was a, you know, wonderful thing. Um, the, uh, the, the, the machine, sorry, the, the, the device has got, uh, for the first time, a phased array probe at one end and linear at the other. And, uh, you know, the, the, I think the combination is a powerful one. I, you know, we've had conversations behind the scenes about what would be best if you can only choose two. And um, I think given that phased array is a low frequency probe and can penetrate deep, I know we're used to using um, curvilinear for uh, some of the, the work we do, but you know, if a probe can achieve the same images, it probably doesn't matter too much about the footprint, but it definitely does matter for cardiac, you know. And although the, the previous version, the SL, was able to get really capable cardiac images. I think it's it's easy for anyone to see that the, the, the sort of design of a phased array footprint is very much designed for going through ribs, and and this now has the capability of real, you know, rotation and getting all the all the windows you need for cardiac ultrasound. So um, you know, a fantastic step forward. But I also I really value the linear probe, you know, for intervention because not all of my job is about diagnosis. It's, a lot of it is about doing stuff and. Having that um, capability in your pocket whenever you need to is um, a really powerful thing. Um, so the, the new addition to this is, is not just the hardware, it's the software and uh, an incredible uh, color package, uh, as good as any cart machine is, in my opinion, and, and of course Pulse Wave Doppler, which really allows us to go into um, hemodynamic assessment with a bit more depth. So having pulse wave is absolutely fantastic for things like Vexus and you know and I probably got you know as well as some absolutely brilliant cardiac imaging I got some of the best Vexus imaging I've ever seen uh, well certainly in my hands uh, renal Doppler traces that were really absolutely super crisp on the arterial side uh, and you know and I was really quite amazed that something as small as this has that c capability um, and of course you know the studies of the venous side of the circulation are really becoming more and more part of what we do and so having that ability to do that you know as and when you need it is, is incredibly powerful so um the uh, the software the sort of the, the interaction with the software and the the phone as you'd imagine is nice and easy so depth and gain all the touch of a thumb button um the the, the accessing the, the doppler modes are, are straightforward and uh, and recording images and reviewing them again is fantastic. I haven't tried going up into the the cloud, but I gather that's a possibility too. And I'm sure you know correspondence uh, with your other devices is pretty straightforward. Um, the so so I've talked about the sort of utility, the, the 
the, the, the ability to move it where you need to and, and the sort of the new technology in there. I suppose it, I'd be uh, to mention the uh, other things like, you know, battery life um, are important. And I found if you're um, not careful, you can potentially leave it on in your pocket as you walk around the hospital. Uh, so I made that mistake once. Um, of course, you know, it will um, it will go sort of idle, but I think it runs down the battery quite significantly. So as soon as I I re realized that and was able to power it off each time. It was really, it lasted, you know, all morning and potentially probably a, a lot longer. Certainly, you know, all the cases I need I could use. So, yeah, definitely, you know, it's got the kind of, it's got the legs for the kind of work that we need to do. I didn't use it continuously, you know, sort of in a ward round in ICU. It just wasn't um, the, the time, I didn't have that capacity at that point. Um, sorry, my computer is just going quiet there. Uh, the but the um, but yes, yeah, so I, I, can't, I can't tell you how long it would have lasted with full deployment of Doppler and so on. Um, but certainly for the work I was doing, it was absolutely great. So um, it's got some real real potential. Um, I, I think you know this is uh, my understanding is GE have acquired Caption Health, which is clearly a, a market leader for. AI and and you know the future of ultrasound that way and I'm really excited about the prospects of that um, collaboration because um, yeah, you know you could easily imagine if this could you know access cloud-based um, analytics and perhaps some of the guidance software that they have quality assurance you know then you know suddenly we've got this incredibly powerful tool um, so I will watch this space with uh, with great interest. And if you're interested, I've, uh, there's a talk up on Johnny's site, uh, Critical Care Northampton, where I just run down the, the, the sort of where we are with AI and all the different vendors. So please take a look at that. That was a talk I gave at Intensive Care Society, State of the Art for GE, just a couple of months ago. Uh, so um, the, the, the only criticism I have of this device is 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 that if I could wave a magic wand, I probably would try to make the phased array as close as possible to the sort of the usual phased array probes we have. It's at the larger end of the probe, which just ergonomically, when you're sort of rotating, feels it just a little bit, you know. And and I think potentially um, when you're doing using uh, the the linear array, you, you probably don't do so much rotation. It's not quite as crucial. So perhaps if the business end of the the probe had to be bigger, I think. My regionalist colleagues would probably uh, be happy with that, and uh, and it wouldn't affect their practice too much. So, but I think it's just I think that's just getting used to something actually. And you know, if I had this probe in my hands for for, for weeks and weeks, I, I bet you it would become second nature and not um, not an issue. So um, yeah, in summary, this is a powerful tool. Uh, it's stepped forwards into you know, real phased array uh, and um, image acquisition, which is you know excellent for cardiac uh, imaging. The um, it's got the, the new pulse wave doppler, which gives us excellent uh, acquisition of Vexus images, uh, some of the best I've ever seen. And I, and I suppose the, the only thing that's missing for me is um, is the continuous wave doppler, but the technology for that is quite difficult. Um, it's, it's it's additional kind of kit that would have to be inside the probe, and that would potentially make it have to be a bit bigger, who knows, a bit heavier. But um, as things become more and more miniaturized. Uh, I'd hope that perhaps the next generation will, will have that and that will give us the full capability of doing you know, a complete hemodynamic assessment including high velocity flow within the heart, tricuspid regurg, quantification and stuff like that because that's quite important as well for us in, in intensive care. But, um, but again, the real power of this is the, is the sort of the union of GE and Caption Health and the potential that this brings to the future uh, that will allow us all perhaps to democratize the more advanced stuff into the hands of people who need it, uh, but with support of AI and quality assurance, which will certainly come embedded within that process. So yeah, I look forward to that. Anyway, thanks for listening. Um, and I, I look forward to uh, chatting perhaps about the next generation uh, when it comes out. Thanks very much. Uh, Johnny Wilkinson here. Um, just want to uh, extend my thanks and gratitude to Ashley Miller 
Marcus Peck for reviewing the probe with me uh, and many thanks to GE Healthcare for providing us very early doors with this fantastic device. So obviously the last time we reviewed the uh, VSCAN Air, uh, their first uh, wireless portable probe and now obviously the VSCAN SL as we've just mentioned throughout the review you've seen. Um, so what do we think? What's the verdict? So this was our overall score table just uh, out of five this is and you can see that we all marked it down on battery life and i guess the main reason for that really was we didn't hammer the probe for long enough um during the time we had it i would have liked to have had it for a lot longer maybe over a one month period to really test it out and see what the battery life was like it was perfectly adequate for what we were doing and as marcus mentioned it went for a day pretty much almost certainly a morning without running out and being recharged the image quality uh cracking for me, uh, particularly when you link it to an iPad Pro. Um, I think uh, we all know the uh, Philips Lumify usually won the cards on the, the image quality, but um, it's got its drawbacks on price and portability and so forth. So Ashley probably marked it down for that reason. Looking at all the other devices we've reviewed, um, you can see how well it fares. And if you look down at the bottom there, aside from the butterfly, which is £1,600. This is really well priced. It's a really good price, sub 5000 So it's within many of the subcapital bid potentials in many trusts around the UK. And look at the score, 9.5 out of uh, 10, which equates to about uh, 19 out of 20 overall. Um, now, th this is a brilliant score. Um, yes, we are uh, affiliated with GE, and uh, yes, we do get honoraria uh, from them for teaching and so forth uh, but nonetheless we have always said and always will provide an, uh, an honest and open review if there's anything we dislike on this probe we will say so but it just really leaves nothing more to say that there really isn't much to dislike aside from what Marcus mentioned about the shouldering on the phased array probe being slightly wide and sometimes a bit awkward when you're trying to get into uh, confined spaces to scan it really did um, display its uh, potential to be uh, a world leading portable ultrasound pro. So I just want to say congratulations to G Healthcare for all the time they've spent with this. And I think the further future updating for the device, we'd love it to have a battery inside the case so you can charge the probe in case you're not near a charging uh, a wireless charger itself that'd be lovely much like yeah pods and your, your earbuds uh, we would also love it to have continuous wave doppler to measure trv max because we find that very useful in clinical practice but i realize there are limitations with hardware and so forth and also the ai capabilities are going to be ever expanding what with um after ai uh, being purchased by GE so there are loads and loads of really exciting things to come with this probe uh, via software updates and stuff so round of applause for GE very well done this is definitely the winning portable ultrasound device so far